Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tickdos product review. Today's review is going to be a little different than I've ever done before on this channel because I've never reviewed an inverter. We have here the Sun Gold Power 12 volt, 3000 watt pure sign inverter. This is good for your van, RV, or even off grid solar because it's got all kinds of options built into it. We're going to go over those today and we're going to find out is it any good? So let's check it out. First things first, I'm going to show you how I have this wired up and what tools I'm going to use for this review. First, I have this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It is a brand name and I'm not going to talk about this in this video because I have a review for this coming up. It has a 100 amp dischargeability and a 50 amp chargeability, which is pretty typical for a drop in lithium battery. And I do have it hooked up with red and black cables. I did make these cables myself. They are under gauge for a 3000 watt inverter, but the thing is I can only pull 100 amps from this battery, which is 1280 watts. So I can't actually exceed 1280 watts anyway, so I saw no point in using my very expensive two watt cable in this situation where two gauge cable will do the job just fine. And for some of these tests, I'm gonna use this clamp meter so we can clamp it onto the battery cables and see what kind of charge and discharge rates we're getting. And of course I have my handy dandy oscilloscope voltmeter, which will tell us all kinds of interesting stuff. We'll go by the display on the Sun Gold Power as for battery voltage and such. This side has two breakers, one for the charger, one for the inverter, a GFI outlet, which is 20 amps. And you can have input and output here through AC power. Now it does come with this cover, so once you get it wired up, you put this cover on. Okay, on this side, you have the input for the battery. You have the remote port, which is for this remote. You have these dip switches, which I'll zoom in and kind of show you that. You have an auto generator start. Yes, this has an auto generator start ability that will actually recharge your batteries if the voltage gets too low. You have an optional battery temp sensor that works with lead acid batteries. And of course you can ground the inverter. If you can see this model's 12 volt. They do make a 24 and a 48 volt version. Okay, now here comes the good stuff. You have the on off switch. Now, if you press it in the up mode, it goes into auto power saver mode. Saves some electricity because it cycles the inverter. You can turn power saver off by pushing the switch down. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Then it says battery charger or shore power on. So since we're plugged into the wall, it's saying the battery charger is enabled. If the inverter powers on, this lights up. And if there is an alarm, this lights up. You have a little toggle here, battery type selector. You can actually go by this table here. Actually, you can go by the book or this table. I currently have this set to charge at 14.6 because that's what they say on the battery. And this little knob here actually allows you to adjust the charging current. So say you don't have big batteries, you can turn the charging current down. And then all these lights, I'm not gonna go over each one, but they tell you what's going on in the inverter. And here's the screen. It actually rotates automatically. After the word welcome, it tells you battery voltage, AC inverter voltage. If there's anything wrong, it'll come up on the screen. It tells you right now the load's being bypassed. It tells you which mode it is depending on those dip switches on the side. So that covers all the externals of the inverter. So let's go ahead and go over some of the features. All right, what comes with the inverter is the user manual and it's actually pretty thick. It's all in English, there's no other languages on this, so every page in here is for you to read. It's pretty well detailed, very well written. I didn't find too many errors or strange spellings, so they had somebody review this who was a native English speaker, which really helped when you got something this complicated. Because this converter can get pretty complicated because it's got a charger built in too, so it depends on what you have set up as to how it works. Now it does come with a remote switch, man, a lot of cable. I don't know how much, but that's a lot. Now the switch on here is an exact duplicate of what's here. So both of these switches do the same thing. And this is optional, you don't have to use it, but if you're gonna put this in a enclosed space or somewhere out of the way, you're gonna wanna install this switch. And then it also comes with, again, a nice lengthy piece of wire. And this is a battery temperature sensor. This plugs in, looks like a little telephone cable, plugs in to the side, and then you put this on one of the terminals of your lead acid battery. This is not for lithium batteries. You do not use a temperature sensor for lithium batteries. So many people think that these sensors are for shutting off the charge when it gets below freezing. 
That's not the case. What this temperature sensor does for lead acid batteries is it tells the inverter what temperature the battery is so it knows how to charge it. Because when a lead acid battery gets hotter, you have to change the charging profile. If you're using lithium batteries, you throw that away, you don't use it at all. Now the BMS in your battery, if you're using a lithium battery, should shut off charging automatically below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius to prevent damage to the lithium battery if it charges below freezing. So that's up to the battery and the BMS of your battery. If you got one of those homemade jobbies, you better hope that your BMS does have low temperature cutoff if you're ever planning to have that battery in below freezing conditions because you can instantly destroy it if you charge it below freezing. So let's go over a little bit of what's in the manual so you know what to expect. Now, one of the things this manual does do is it covers all the different models. So it depends on which model you get. It depends on which features you have. Here's that chart I was telling you, it's in the book that you can set your battery to. Now I got this inverter almost a year ago. Um, since they released this actual inverter, they now have a lithium mode. But because it's a drop-in lithium battery, you can use anything on here that's for lead acid. So I'm using AGM2, which charges at 14.6 and floats at 13.7, because that's what my battery tells me it should do. It also tells you here what your charging current should be, depending on the model. It explains if you hear this thing beeping, sometimes it'll beep randomly when it's changing modes, and this will tell you what that means. Okay, let's go over the dip switch settings. Switch 1, SW1, allows you to set the low battery trip voltage. So in my case, I have it set to 10 and a half volts or position one because it's a lithium battery and you don't want to discharge them below 10 and a half volts. Uh, switch two does AC input range. Now this depends on your local electricity or what you're doing. I set this to position zero because I want it to work between 100 and 135 volts. Switch three is power saver. If you set it to position zero, it'll only detect if your inverter is being used every 30 seconds. If you set it to position one, it'll check every three seconds. Now I think almost everybody's gonna want position one because if you turn on appliance, you don't wanna wait 30 seconds for it to kick on. Switch four is pretty obvious, position one for North America. Switch five is battery priority. Now this is the important switch because if you have it set to position one, it's always going to use the battery. If you have it set to position zero, it's going to pass through AC power from your generator or your grid to the outlets and to the AC output. So it best explains it right there. You can pause right here and read that if you like. Now this does have a built-in transfer switch which switches at eight milliseconds, which is probably good enough for practically every computer out there. Maybe not for a very sensitive computer server, but for normal PCs, modern PCs with good power supplies, eight milliseconds is plenty fast. This section goes over the different power saver modes. The rest of this is all about how to hook it up and what its limitations and things are. It's all kind of technical mumbo jumbo, probably most of you don't care about unless you buy it. So I'll leave that up to you to read and check out. Now the way the Sun Gold Power works depends on how you have that switch number five set. If you have it set to battery priority mode, which means it will always discharge your battery. So that's for home solar. So you have a large battery bank, you wanna power the outlets or the AC output, I should say, cause you're gonna wire that into your house. You're gonna to wanna to use this mode when you wanna drain your batteries in an off-grid solar situation. So if I was actually gonna power my property with one of these, and you can get these in much larger versions, you would put it in battery priority mode. It would drain your batteries down to a certain voltage, depending on how you have it set. And then it would use grid power or generator power with the generator auto start to charge your batteries back up. Assuming, say there's no solar for three days, you know, because there's uh, clouds, bad weather, this will actually charge your batteries back up for you using grid or generator power automatically, which is pretty darn cool. Now in the other mode, that is for RV van life type situation where you're plugging into shore power. So you're gonna plug this inverter into shore power and you're gonna pass that through the inverter as is to your appliances in your RV. The battery is only used when the inverter is unplugged from grid power. So that's how you wanna have the switch set if you're in grid priority mode. 
Now let's demonstrate RV mode. So this is the mode that you'd use if you're using this in an RV or a van life situation. I have a power meter plugged into the wall and that power meter is running to the input of this. So we can see how much power this is actually pulling. This meter is the output. So I have this running to a heater on the floor so we can see how much power is coming out of the inverter. So we got input over there and output over here. Now what happens is gonna depend on that switch setting. So we do have our 100 amp hour battery hooked up. And remember, I can only pull 1280 watts or 100 amps out of this before it will shut down. These batteries self protect, so if I try to pull more than 100 amps, it just cuts off. Unfortunately, in this situation, I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the 3000 watt inverter under max load, because I would need three of these batteries. Now, since this battery's already been charged up overnight, this inverter's in float mode, so it's really not pushing very much power at all through here. In fact, it's only 0.6 amps. So power from the wall says 43 watts. Power going out says about 20 watts. So this is simulating shore power hookup. Your batteries are fully charged. Now it's just gonna pass the AC through. Now what's pretty cool about this inverter is that it actually does clean up dirty power. It actually has a voltage regulation circuitry in the inverter. So even if the voltage is low or unsteady, in an RV park, this will actually clean up that dirty power and output clean power. This is one of the benefits to a low frequency inverter. It does a very good job of cleaning up power that comes out on the other side. So why is things so big and heavy? So let's go ahead and turn it off. Let's go ahead and flip that switch over to home solar power and I'll demonstrate how that works. Okay, now it's going to discharge the batteries and not use power from the wall. So I'm still plugged into the wall but now it's gonna discharge this battery and we'll prove it to you by showing you the meter on the wall. You can see right there, it says zero watts. So we're pulling nothing from the wall. And you can see over here, we're still pulling a load of 20 watts. Now you can see here, it says we're pulling 4.3 amps from the battery. Now, if you're good at math, you might be thinking it's pulling four amps from a 12 volt battery. That's about 48 watts, but only 20 watts are coming out. What gives? Well, this is a large 3000 watt inverter. And even though it's a low frequency inverter and it's very efficient, it still gobbles up about 20 watts while it's running. So whether you're putting a load through it or not, it's gonna use about 20 watts. And that's where all the power saving modes come in to where if a load is under, I think it's 30 watts is what it says in the manual, the inverter won't come on if you have it in the ultimate power saving mode. So that's not really gonna work for a lot of people. You're probably gonna wanna leave it in one of the lower power saving modes or just leave power saving off so that it will detect loads even if they're small. Now, it doesn't matter what brand inverter you get, all these gobble some kind of power at idle while they're not doing anything. And the larger inverter you get, the more power it uses. So although this inverter is very efficient on the output you can expect you're going to lose somewhere around 20 watts while it's running so because this is an inverter the first thing we're going to check is the sine wave so i have a heater running on the floor at about a thousand watts we'll zoom in and see what the sine wave looks like as you can see there the sine wave is pure we got 115 volts at 60 hertz now we already checked out the sine wave but i want to show you guys how stable this is under load so I have an electric heater on the floor with three settings, fan, low, and high heat. I'm gonna zoom in on the voltage coming out of the inverter, and I wanna show you how stable it is. So here we are, 120 volts, and that's under no load. Let's go ahead and put the heater on. You know, I have the heater on maximum. Let's see how many watts it's pulling. Get to the limit of the battery, but there we go. 1200 watts, 60 hertz, and it's holding well, it was holding 118 volts. So now you see what happens if you pull more than 1200 watts out of a single lithium iron phosphate drop-in replacement battery. Since that thing has a limit of 100 amps or about 1200 watts, as soon as I pulled over 1200 watts from the inverter, let's do that on low heat on the heater this time. There we are, we're on low heat, 800 watts, 60 Hertz, 120 volts, rock solid. So you're probably wondering how loud is this when it's running the inverter? It's actually very quiet. Let's go ahead and measure it. 49 decibels. Told you it's quiet. I mentioned before that this has a battery charger built in. And you're probably wondering how powerful is that charger? 
It's actually a whopping 90 amps for this 12 volt version, which is practically twice what I have in my van that's charging three Battleborn batteries. So this thing can handle lots of lithium batteries or lots of lead acid batteries without much of a problem. Now the thing is, in order for me to show you this actually charging at 90 amps, I would need three batteries to demonstrate 3000 watts of discharging and I would need two, more likely three batteries to demonstrate the 90 amp charging. So I can't do either one of those with a single lithium iron phosphate battery. So unfortunately, You'll just have to take their word for it in this particular review that it can do 90 amps. Now, I know it'll do 90 amps because when I put it on fast charge, it ticks up for instant up to like 90 amps and then comes back down to 35 amps. So I know this will actually do what it says it'll do. So we're pulling about 850 watts. Let's see how much we're pulling from the battery in amps. So there you go, we're pulling 78 amps. And remember this battery can only do 100. 78 amps times 12 volts is 936 watts. What we're actually pulling out is 822. So, so if you divide those two numbers, you get 88%, which is pretty typical. Most of these large low frequency inverters typically use anywhere between five and 15%. So this is about right in the middle. Okay, now that I've discharged the battery a little bit, let's see if I can catch it charging a little bit faster than the 50 amps that the battery says it can handle. So, okay, here we go. Oh, 64 amps. It's actually charging right now. And then it, you'll see it'll drop down pretty quickly. Now, because that's a negative number, it's because the power is going through the cable the other direction. And I guess you could probably still read that, but let me go ahead and turn down the battery charger. So I turned it all the way down to 20 amps. So now we should see it limiting it to about 20 amps. There we go. The lowest setting on this will allow you to charge your batteries at a very slow 20 amps. In this case, it sounds like the battery charger fan's not even kicking on. Okay, it took a bit of finagling, but I finally got the charger fans to kick on high. Let's see how loud it is. Around 60 decibels. So if you read in the manual, it actually says that the fans will either be off, on low, or on high, depending on the load. So there's one fan for the charger that's built in and there's one fan for the inverter. So depending on what's going on, the fans may not be on at all. They may be on low or they may be on high. So keep that in mind. The low fan is very low and very quiet. The high fan, of course, is when it needs maximum pulling, it's gonna get significantly louder. No inverter test would be complete without a little solar degenerator. Now I have this set on about a thousand watts because I can't pull much more than that from the battery. But in any case, let's do it just for fun. There you have it, thousand watts, 60 hertz, 118 volts. If you're interested in the Sun Gold Power 3000 watt inverter, there's a link in the description below. You can click on, add the promo code in checkout to get the final price. They do offer all kinds of other modes. They have 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt inverter chargers. And they also have ones that will do single phase or split phase. So if you need a 240 volt inverter instead of a 120 volt inverter, they have those too. They have them in 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000, and they go up from there. So these are all low frequency inverters. So they're all built with quality. The Sun Gold Power Inverters offer a one-year warranty, which you could extend an additional 18 months. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Check out what's been going on at the Hobo Stead lately. If you know what this is, leave it in the comments. If you want to see more, go to patreon.com slash hobodag. RV Golf Guy, Ant Medicario, Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Brian Blue, first John Stacey Soroko.